Hey guys, how's it going? I'm back here with another video. And today we're going to dive deep into the topic of what you should know if you're going to start a job using react. The reason why I'm making this video is because I realized that a lot of the contents that I make and a lot of my fellow YouTubers make as well is related to updated react patterns. However, based on my experience and the experience of most people, if you get into a job and the company has been around for a, like more than two years and they're using react, they'll probably not have the most up to date code. And the reason for that is because companies just don't have the resources to put a specific team for migrating to an updated version. And thus what they usually end up doing is either they never update their project to adapt to the new patterns, or they just never migrate the old uh, files. And just whenever they start a new file, in their project, they use the new pattern. It's very common for you to start a job nowadays and go in there and expect you to be using all the technologies and the React concepts that you just recently learned and you end up getting there and you see that they're still using class components. So understanding what you should expect and how to deal with those kind of situations is the reason why I'm making this video. So with that in mind, let's get into the video. So while the React community has fully embraced the idea of functional components, it is a given like that's what you should be using. A lot of companies still use class components, but not necessarily for all of their files. Uh, at least from my experience, I know that companies tend to have older files from the project, meaning usually files that are the most important because they're usually part of the core of the project. They're still in class components and um, transitioning them outside of it can possibly introduce a lot of bugs or just take a lot of time, which is something that companies not always have. So I want to talk a little bit about dealing with class components. So if you've never actually had to work with the class components, which is something that is crazy to me, because when I started learning react, uh, you had to learn class components. Uh, nowadays, I expect a lot of people to not even touch that. So I'll give you guys a brief explanation on what it is. As you can see in the screen, this is the class component. And I expect you guys to recognize that it is but what exactly is it doing? Now, first of all, I need to tell you guys, class components are very different from functional ones. Firstly, they are structured in an object oriented way where you can access the informations based on uh, the class in itself and you can create different methods and you access them depending on where you have constructors, methods, uh, you have the key, the this keyword, all of that, that you might be used to doing or using in different languages. Also, um, class components, they can't use React hooks because React hooks was introduced as a solution for the pattern of class components. So you can't use any of the built in uh, use state, use effect, any of that, uh, because they have their own solution, but in a class component way. So for example, instead of using the use state hook, as you can see on the screen, you can actually alter a state of a component by uh, accessing the this dot state. And instead of using the use effect, for example, you have three different lifecycle methods um, that are important for you to know, but uh, they are as important as a use effect in a functional component uh, project. Uh, basically, if you ever see a component did update a component did mount or a component will mount, each of them are, are supposed to be replaced with a single use effect. So whenever you see those, you kind of just by the name, you understand what they're doing, right? So a quick way to memorize the difference is that the component did mount is a function that will run whenever the component is first mounted into the DOM. The component did update is similar to putting uh, a state in the dependency list of your use effect, it will basically run whenever there's a state change in your application, and the component will mount It's actually deprecated and unsafe to use. But if you ever encounter it, it's basically going to run before the initial rendering of your component. So whenever you see those functions, now you kind of know what they are and what they would be if this was a functional component. And if you ever need to interact with them, I would recommend actually, uh, doing a little bit of a deeper dive into what they are. So you don't actually break the code in your job. Now that you kind of understand class components, I want to talk about something that you'll definitely run into if, if you have any class components in your project, and it is a it is a company that deals with fetching data and handling a big application, you'll definitely run into what is known as higher order components. This was a topic that uh, people used to freak out so much over they used to it used to be the hardest thing for you to learn when you started learning react. And nowadays, no one really uses it because it is 
obviously uh, an old pattern. Um, and higher order components are actually extremely cool in my opinion, because they are a great solution for how React was back in the day. So what exactly is a higher order component? Well, it's a function that takes in a component and it returns back a component with added logic. So a great way to explain this, and I'm showing you in the screen over here an example of how I would most likely see this in a company is having a higher order component, which handles all of uh, fetching and um, like fetching data and returning the component with the prop. So an example, and I'm probably showing you in the screen as um, having a higher order component that will take in a component. It's a function that will take in, I don't know, a component that is supposed to display some, some data. And inside of there, inside of the higher order component, you will fetch some data and return back the old component, but with some sort of logic inside of it and an added prop, right? Um, and that will allow you to separate your logic inside of your project. So you don't keep fetching everything inside of the same file. It helps also reusability. It's an introduction to something like using creating custom hooks that we see nowadays, uh, but with the old pattern. And it's actually pretty cool. I, I think back in the day, it was definitely scary. And whenever you run into it, you'll probably find it weird in the beginning if it's your first time. But trust me, it's not that complicated. Uh, by the example you're seeing in this screen, um, you can kind of get, especially if you've worked with a custom hook in the past, you're just trying to create something that is reusable and separating logic from components. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is probably one of the most important ones, which is the idea that if you're going to work in a job which has old React patterns, it most likely will use a third party state manager. And the reason for that is because, well, there, there was no context API, there was most likely, I don't remember, but I don't think there was an easy solution for using something like React Query uh, as a state manager. So I guarantee you'll run into a code base that is using something like Redux or even MobX. While you and I and most people <laughs> probably prefer using something like the Context API or even Zustent, which I made a video recently about, um, there's no running away from uh, actually having to deal with Redux. Uh, because that's just how it was back in the day. Redux used to control React. It used to be the main thing you needed to learn. Like people would take courses just on Redux because that's that was such a big thing that you needed to know while also working in React. And we still see some patterns that are that were left over from that architecture uh, nowadays in React. You might have run into selectors, reducers, actions, all of that. Um, some state management uh, systems and libraries still use that kind of pattern. However, understanding them, even by just practicing the use reducer hook, which is something that exists outside of class components, um, will help you get more used to that pattern. Trust me, it is way easier to just use, just use a, a use state and a use context, but you'll need to deal with that. So getting to know that before your first day of your job is really important. So in conclusion, React's evolution throughout the years have introduced uh, simpler ways to actually program your components and more efficient ones as well. However, the web dev industry moves so fast that even I as a YouTuber who makes content on this kind of stuff find it really hard to keep up. It just feels like sometimes you spend years learning and perfecting a technology just to then see it becoming obsolete, right? And it can be very discouraging. However, I think at the end of the day, all technologies are very similar to each other. So if you get really good at the core concepts that you're learning, you'll be able to adapt really quickly. And while working at a job that doesn't actually help you keep your skills sharp, spending some time on your, your own uh, free time, just relearning some stuff, keeping up with the new updates and everything that you can will actually help because most likely you're not going to get into a job which has their React project up to date with a newer version. It's usually two to three versions before. So if we're here excited for React 19, your project is probably going to be on React 17 or even 16. <laughs> so uh, that can actually be kind of encouraging as well because it just means that you have so much time to keep up before you have to actually use it in your job. So thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like down below and comment what you want to see next. Subscribe because I'm posting every week and I would massively appreciate it. And yeah, that's basically it. Really hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you guys next time.